All right, folks, this is it. day three of the 2024 Australian Ultimate Championships here at Shepparton in Victoria. My name, as always, is Blair Munro, here with the Ulti TV crew for an exciting match here. Two streams, no strangers to the competition, but strangers to your screens. We have Fishwick Unit. Now, we've seen their counterparts, Fishwick Uni, a couple of times throughout the tournament. Some fantastic performance from the lads in orange. And facing off against them, we have Duff Stout in the light kit. So, a Fishwick Unit on your screens at the moment. A game, to the best of my knowledge, to 15. I'm here with the Ulti TV crew. Proudly supported and working in partnership with the Australian Flying Disc Association. We are going to see Fishwick Unit come out on defense. And there's the pull going up early. A vertical stack from Stout. Pushing towards the far sideline. Fishwick unit sticking to a match defense and getting a block early in the game. Connor Boyce with the touch. Khan losing yards on the reset, managing to hit the near sideline with a lot of aggression, finds Chen. Goes back around to Khan, to Chen, hit the up line. Right on the doorstep, can't quite get it there, puts the high blade up for the score. And an early break for Fishwick Unit. Firing early from Fishwick. Up by one. With a break in the opening minutes of the game. Fishwick unit also fielding a much larger roster than Stout. So they'll have been able to load manage throughout the course of the tournament. Phenomenal pull there. from Eric Horvath. And we are going to see a couple of surnames that are very familiar to uh, those who have been watching the other Fishwick games. A Horvath. Of course, there's another Bethune. And a Millard Cartwright. Now, we'll see what kind of Frisbee dynasties are being developed in Australia throughout the course of this match. Great around reset. Continues such aggressive attack from Stout. And a pick has been called. Some fantastic disc movement from Huang Li, really aggressive with the cuts. Gonna receive it on the far sideline now. Working, yet another pick, or possibly some contact has been called. A little bit of communication there on the field, trying to figure out, make some adjustments to the force. 
making sure that defensively all the players are on the same page. Paveda with the disc now. Fantastic deep cut from Lucas Zul. Not rewarded, decides to try again. Weidler getting the disc off the near sideline. Weidler with the crossfield hammer. And it's good. Paveda with the disc for the score to tie the game. One and one. Fishwick unit and Duff Stout. So one break, one hold. The score is tied, but now Fishwick Unit have the opportunity to come out on offense. See the pull, nice and high with a lot of float. Not an aggressive chase, so they're going to be able to get a couple of passes away before the defense gets an opportunity to set. Bethune and Mitchell working in that handler space, able to cut through. Finds Jaleel. Bethune on the far sideline manages to get the disc back to center field. Undercuts, but the ground's still a little dewy. Hasn't had a chance to dry out yet in the Australian sun. A little bit less precise in some of the movement. Bethune puts it up. That's going to be a score for Fishwick. Huge play there. Nice crisp offense. Figuring out where to best direct the momentum. And really punch through with an emphatic point on the board. Very clean, very precise. And just using that youth, that explosiveness. A dainty little flick all the way through to Pal for the score to keep Fishwick unit up by one. Now we've seen them able to generate breaks, to really pour the pressure on. We'll see whether or not Duff Stout have been able to make an adjustment to the intensity they'll need to bring and the pace and the awareness in order to stop an attack like that happening again. A great roll and a very aggressive chase. An unforced error with is going to give Fishwick unit an opportunity. Khan has the disc. Comes all the way around. Finds Chen. Scoop fake. Tries to get a bite out of the defense. A little off balance. Slippy in the wet grass. But Chen and Khan working together. Nice wide shot around. Finds McManus. Waiting for an isolation to develop. It's low, but it's going to be all right. Horvath's got it in hand. Couldn't get the cut. Tries for the inside shot. That's going to do it. Another Fishwick break.
Fishwick to come out on defense yet again. We have a game to 15 on, for the final bracket on, play for our tournament. Harvey with the big pull. A little bit too big. And so we'll see whether or not Stout decide to brick the disc. Or looks like they'll take it in from where it first crossed the boundary of the playing field. for Stout. Working with Weidler, a big fake. Weidler losing yards. Bloomer intense with the fakes. The high forehand up. Pressure from the Fishwick unit defense. It's going to throw off the timing of the reception just enough. Waiting for an undercut. Hoping to use the width of the field instead forced back towards the far sideline. Nice and aggressive on the up line to find Koo. Continues up for Eppleston. Liam Varley with the disc. Goes back to Asher Gentle. Pushing far sideline for Brian Koo. The one hand take by Varley. Managing to slip it. To Willith Gamua. Goes back. Tavali, and yet another pick has been called. It's early in the day, the ground is still wet. Teams, this is their first game of the day. It's going to take a while to dial in the precision. Pushing far sideline now for Tom Harvey. Comes back to Vali. Back to Harvey. The defense is scrambling. They're not making a lot of progress on this possession. Some sneaky reset options, but not gaining a huge amount from it until Bali gets a huge bite out of the defense. Can't capitalize. Possibly another pick or some contact on a pursuit. Asher Gentle gets the reset. Immediate swing back to Vali. Goes around to Gentle. Can't close out on the one. Vali on the second bite. Takes it down. Fishwick unit four. Stout one. That's going to be the pull received, quickly recented. An 
an unfortunate clap catch goes awry to quickly give the disc back to McManus. Khan getting it by way of Patel. And another pick. Khan pushes wide. And gets, loops back around for the up line from Piers Fluk to go Fishwick five over Stouts one. We do have a timeout being called. Four points on the bounce from Fishwick. Some really great defense on display from the lads in orange. It's as good a time as any to take a small break, have a moment, celebrate your victories, commiserate your losses, figure out what is working and what isn't working, and what adjustments you need to make in order to really be a little bit more dominant in this first half if you're stout. What adjustments do you need to make? What kind of changes do you want to put in place? If you're Fishwick unit, chances are it's a... Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's just pretend that the score is still nil all and we're still looking for that first break every single point. But we'll see what the result of that conversation is when we return after a short break. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. And so the Fishwick huddle on your screens at the moment, up by four of a Duff Stout. Lots of little errors that we're seeing from Stout at the moment. Their cold drops. Yes, uh, we've seen Fishwick really dial up the intensity and get some aggressive blocks. But a lot of these points have come from just little miscommunications, little mistimings in, um, in throws and cuts. We're seeing discs drop out of hands or just slightly be overthrown. Maybe not accounting for... The wetness of the disc, the wetness of the ground. Uh, the air is quite cool this morning despite the sun. All of these little things might make a fact, uh, contribute to some of these little inconsistencies in the stout game. Fishwick unit have displayed that they are fantastic at capitalizing on those. An early roller pull. Weidler and Bloomer working hard. Decides to push near sideline. A cheeky slide. Tim G cuts back through middle field. Back to Weidler, puts the shot up. Joshua Willis Gamua with the high flying block. See it again. What a huge block there for Fishwick Unit. And an opportunity now to cut back the other way. McManus. Eaten up. An imprecise throw might just be the edge that Stout need to bring themselves back into this game. Looks like there may have been a touch on that disc as well from the defense. Weidler. 
Goes to Bloomer, midfield. And that's going to do it. Stout back on the board. The score is 5-2. Still to Fishwick. 19 minutes into a game and a race to 15. That's the pull from Stout to be fielded. Push through to Garbutt. Bethune puts the shot up. Big chase and a tumble. Kyle Mitchell in hot pursuit. Took a slip. It's unclear. Looks like a foul's going to be accepted. So what will happen is the disc will be checked in. Once it's live, they'll bring it back to the front of the end zone and then play can resume. Mitchell manages to get around despite the great layout bid from Lucas Jewell. Huge score by Fishwick to take them to six. What a fantastic bid, but not going to be enough. Big pull from Tom Harvey. But it's going to touch down out of bounds on the far side this time. We are going to see Stout brick the disc and bring it to a point about 18 meters in front of the defensive end zone. with the disc eaten up by Vali with the poach block out of nowhere he's wearing bright orange but he's still somehow invisible popping up to steal that one McManus comes back to Vali center field Reset to McManus. They're losing yards, but they've still got possession. Vali with an aggressive upline attack. McManus can't get the shot around, decides to go back around, find Fluke. 
Chen doing a lot of work on the near sideline. And a pick was called. Khan with the disc, pushes up the sideline. Vali, Khan with the shimmy shake, but the defense floods in. McManus comes back around to Harvey. Vali. And that's going to be the turnover that Stout need. Puts the big shot up, but it's blading over early. And immediately uncorks from Dowell, but can't get it to the hands of his receiver in the end zone. Perhaps a tactical territorial play. Puts the big shot up. It's going to be eaten by Bloomer. Drives back down the far sideline. Big crossfield hammer for the score. Yes, it is. Stout back within three. The signal for readiness given by Stout. Let's go, Stout! A wonderful pull. Just fades away towards the near sideline right at the end. It's going to give Fishwick unit an opportunity to bring it to the brick mark. with the disc. Crisp backhand through, decides to push to the near sideline. And a pick. Joshua Willith Gamua one more time. What a phenomenal run down there. Pushing towards the far side line. It's going to take Fishwick unit within one of the half.
What a take. And he managed to keep his hat on, no less. Quick recenter to Burt. Snaps through to Sanger to continue through to Willith Gamua, who takes it on the second attempt. Fishwick unit wanting a break here for what is going to be the last pull of their half. Eric Horvath with a big outside in roller pull, but it's fielded early by Weidler working with Bloomer. Can't stop the around shot. Two attempts at it. Slips through the hands to give the disc back to Fishwick. McManus unmarked. Takes a second to dry the disc off. Huge bid. Can't stop it. Andy Chen with the crossfield cut is going to take Fishwick unit to half in the 30th minute of the game. Stout firing back with a couple of points, but the first half is emphatically, undeniably belonging to Fishwick unit. Having capitalized heavily on any small miscommunications, any tiny errors in the Stout game, they've found them, and they have slowly prized them apart to earn themselves a five-point lead at the end of the first half in a game to 15. The team that wins this match, we will see later on in the grand final. What a match that is going to be. But until then, we're just going to take a short break. My name is Blair Monroe. I'm here with the OTTV crew, proud partners of the Australian Flying Disc Association, AFTA, at the Australian Ultimate Championships Division 2 in Shepparton, Victoria. We'll be back very soon. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh, that was a huge play, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it.
And welcome back, folks, for the second half of our Open Division semi-final at the 2024 Division Two Australian Ultimate Championships at Shepparton in Victoria. My name is Blair Munro here with Ulti TV. We have Fishwick Unit on a little bit of a runaway, but they're going to be coming out on offense after this point. So I was there for the flip. Stout called uh, to start the game on offense. And... If Fishwick Unit can get a hold here, they're going to crack open the game to a six-point lead. Nice amount of float. Now, we've seen some great precision from Unit. Bethune all the way through to Jaleel. Beautifully led out pass to Sanger. Back to Bethune, Patrick Bethune. Garbett baits the upfield cut, decides instead to come near sideline. Cuts a little close for the upline opposition as we see that zone defense from Stout. Really trying to stop the movement of the disc more than isolate the players. But Bethune right on the doorstep, drops the hammer. Comfortably fielded. Fishwick unit go to nine. It really is wonderful seeing the development of the game. We're seeing a lot of, um, a lot more motion-driven offense, particularly as the youth space develops a lot. You start seeing those players moving through the secondary school and youth systems, moving into the club scene. They start bringing a lot of creativity with them. All very nice and fluid. Unit on defense. About to put the disc up. Horvat with the pull. Touch and roll. And as it leaves the playing field. Because it touched down within bounds first, that's where it has to be taken from. So there was a great opportunity there to for set up a trap. Decided to miss it in favor of a match offense. And Stout are going to take it and run with it, having gained back a lot of yards. Weidler again. Tim G. Horvath forces the disc backwards to Bloomer, but quickly snaps back to Weidler. Big hammer fake. Decides to reset instead. And that's going to do it. Were it not for the pick being called. Weidler to retain possession of the desk, marked by Eppleston. Same cut goes anyway. That's going to be Stout on the board in the second half. We see a 9-4 lead to Fishwick. But if Stout can keep up that pressure, they'll be able to make that gap even smaller. 
And this is really what you'd expect to see from a semi-final, folks. A lot of hotly contested plays. Uh, we're seeing a lot of calls made, but they are being resolved well and quickly, which is a great demonstration of the spirit of the game that we as Ultimate players respect so much. We see the signal for readiness given by Fishwick. Stout with the disc for the pull. Huang Li puts it up. Fielded early recenter to Garbutt. Pushes wide to an unmarked player. Decides to cut back across field to Bethune with a nice high forehand blade. Garbutt, Bethune. Puts the high shot up. Finds Paul. Goes around nice and easy, does it? To find Willith Gamua yet again. Fishwick to hit double digits. Willis Gamua's third point of the game. What a find. Pal. As the defense scrambles to take away the immediate threat. Willith Gamua wide open, closer to the near sideline. Such an appealing target. And a crisp, yet gentle, around backhand to float out into space for him. Ten four, good buddy. Horvath again. Bluma hoping for something to develop in the underspace, but all the players looking with a big downfield focus. Decides instead to come back. Finds Baker. Bluma doesn't let it rip. Decides instead to work with Weidler. Cutting through the midfield, the disc turns over too early. <laughs> Unit now, nothing really developing. Horvat on the near sideline decides to swing back. Bethune. Millard Cartwright making a huge stretch deep. It doesn't get rewarded. Yang pops through to Vali. Back around. Tiang Chen cutting towards the far side line on a wide under. Is rewarded. Big fake. There's a lot of space. His defender's leaving room for Jesus. Goes back around Diwali. And a laser shot straight through to Millard Cartwright for the score. That is going to put Fishwick unit up again, 
over Stout. Fishwick unit to come out on defense. Harvey with the pole. Having a bit of trouble keeping those inbounds so far, but third time's a charm. The left shot from Huang Li pushing towards far sideline for Paveda by way of Crocker. Ryu gets involved. The shot comes up. Harvey with the denial. And there's going to be a call. Some involved conversation seeking perspective now from teammates <laughs> Lucas Zhu what a character I think a reasonable reasonable call if nothing else the opportunity to have the discussion receiving input from our game advisor which is non-binding but it is important that players who seek information from a game advisor do take that into consideration when making the discussion yep and the spirited thing to do when players are unable to reach a decision is going to be to contest the call and allow the disc to return to the last uncontested possession. So Stout will retain it, but they're a little bit further back from the end zone than they'd like to be, particularly with a seven point deficit in the latest stages of this match. We've hit 47 minutes on the clock now. Is he going to just do it again? Huang Lee pressured now. Stall count's getting a little bit late. Goes to Crocker. Gets it back. A necessary dive there to save that. An upline from... Huang Li is going to get them back on the doorstep. Grill getting involved, going to Huang Li. And it's pulled down by Paveda for the stout score. out to come out on defense now six points down still anybody's game the pull goes up 
And an offside has been called. So Fisherwick Unit will be able to take the disc from the brick mark. Bethune to Burt. Puts a big shot up, but who's underneath it? In hot pursuit. Heads Bloomer on the defense. A half second holster on that one. Might have seen a Fishwick score, but not today. Weidler puts it up. Dow comes down with it. Goes back to Gannett. And that's gonna be what Stout needed. Bringing that deficit closer and closer, making their mark as a second half team in this exciting semi-final match. Double coffees. It's the fuel that the LTTV machine runs on, folks. My name is Blair Munro with the LTTV crew. Huge thanks to our supporters. Mike's sister, my day one. Pete Gifford, the one, the only. Technically, there are two. Um, he's also the bass player for Midnight Oil, an Australian <laughs> band. And my Pete plays the bass as well. So, there's some time travel shenanigans going on there. But while Ulti TV may run on coffee, the lads on the field, on the screen in front of you, run on something else entirely. Stout, currently down by five, but have put on some impressive pressure in the last couple of points. Huge pull goes up. Bethune to Sanger. Straight shot through to Garbutt, continuing, pushing towards the far sideline. Garbutt has a reset, nearly saves off the block. Can't quite do it. This is an opportunity for Stout here, folks. Kwang Lee threading through. It bounces back. Cleo with the disc now. Nguyen. Right on the doorstep for Stout. Paveda decides to go back. Finds Huang Lee. The hammer, it comes in low. It's going to be eaten up. Fishwick have it back. They've got a chance. Pushing back to Jaleel. Unmarked, decides to let it rip, chooses not to. Sanger gets a bite out of Huang Li, finds Jaleel near sideline, still not going to rip it. Deciding to play it safe, nice and patient passes coming through. It's Garbutt with the high blade, it's going to touch down out of bounds. out to take possession bring the disc to the front of the end zone they'll be right in that front corner which is a dangerous spot for them to be it all comes down to the kind of defensive pressure that Fishwick can apply for the next 10 seconds that's going to do it Phenomenal work with the cheeky poach. Just that ability to read where the threat was and cuts through. It's Bethune. Wide reset. Finds Jaleel. Backhand through to Sanger for the score. Fishwick unit to 12. Three points away from a victory. Stout on six.
Bishwick unit. Horvath with the pull. That same high outside edge roller. But Stout are ready for it now. Weidler past halfway now. Off only a couple of passes. Bloomer with the shimmy shake. Gets away with the reset. Can't get the hammer away. Not quite able to get a bite out of that one. That's going to be a score for Stout. Back within five. Stout to come out on defense now. Five points in it. They've been on the back foot for a lot of this match. But they're applying pressure where it's necessary. Can they maintain that momentum? Quick recentering pass to Bethune. And around to Millard Cartwright. Willith Gamua. Fakes from Burt. Willith Gamua. Burt wanted the up line. It's not going to happen. Jaleel getting involved. Quick around backhand back to Bethune. Room to breathe. Finds Garbutt for the undercut. Not gaining a lot here. Goes for a break shot. Finds Paul Millard Cart right now. Very close to the doorstep. Bethune can't finish it off just yet. It's Willis Gamua yet again. We've seen him put three on the board and now an assist. Can somebody say man of the match? Fishwick unit, 13, two points away from a win. See again. Just floating out into space right into the path of the receiver as they make a cross cut towards the near sideline. Stout with a hand up. Fishwick to clear the field. Horvath yet again with the pull. Goes for inside out this time. There's going to be no roll. Fielded early by Bloomer. Nice and aggressive. And that's enough to get the turn. Thrown out into space. Max Eppleston for Kash Patel. Fishwick unit one away from a win, folks. Stout on the back foot, seven points behind. Not an impossible situation to come back from. There's no more dangerous place to be than up by seven points and one point away from victory. The moment you think you have breathing room, that's when a team like Stout are going to fire back. So we're seeing a timeout called here. 
Fishwick unit needing to put out the seven players who are going to be the best for this situation. They need to generate a turn. They need to close out the game early. They don't want to give anything up. Whose engine's running hot? Who's got fresh legs? Who's dialed in? Who's focused? Who's got the reaction speed? What combination of seven players are you going to put out on the line to put this away right now? Stout, on the other hand, need to think about precision and intensity. They need to just slowly pick away at the very impressive Fishwick unit defense if they want to keep themselves in this game. I say it all the time, nothing less than perfection will see Stout win this game. Fishwick unit. They just need to put one more point on the board. And so, Fishwick Unit's last pull of the game. From here on out, if they do not score this point, they'll be given the disc at every opportunity. But first, right here, in what could be the last moments of the match, they'll have to earn it. Millard Cartwright on the mark. Let's it go to the near sideline. Cleo now goes through the middle to find Crocker. Roxburgh not there as an option. Yes, he is. He wants to just put it long, but a pick's been called. So a little bit of pursuit interference in the downfield space by the positioning of other players. Roxborough pushes towards the far sideline, finds Huang Li with a high backhand. Too many cooks spoil the broth, folks. This could be it for Fishwick. Chen goes back with a violation. Looks like a foul's been called in the downfield space. Possibly a little bit of contact. Or possibly going back to the throw. So it looks like, regardless of whether or not the foul was contested or not, the disc is going to go back. So Huang Li will retain possession, forced out. There was an uncharacteristic shape to that, so possibly there was some interference on that disc. Huge bid from Fishwick Units, not going to be enough. But the second one will. Chen pushes wide, finds Eppleston near sideline. Inside shot, but it's touched. Not going to be picked up by Millard Cartwright. He was right there. Oh, my God, Father. Now they've got to do it again. Huang Li puts the shot up. Finds Nguyen marked by Harvey. Huge bid by Yang, can't get it. Stout on a bit of a runaway. Nguyen has it now. Roxburgh decides to go deep. Nguyen on the up line, far side line. Looks all the way back, finds Huang Li. Millard Cartwright, aggressive on the defense, forces back towards the far sideline. One hand, not going to do it. 
Chan has it, looks back to Yang. Comes all the way wide. Finds Eppleston with an inside shot. Can he get there? If anyone could, it was going to be William Millard Cartwright, but not today. A fantastic territorial option, perhaps, to force Stout into the back corner. Millard Cartwright's been impressive on defense so far. Can he do the 10 seconds of hard work that's going to be necessary for a Fishwick score? And the answer is no, as Stout break free from the corner trap, find Nguyen far sideline. Big fake gets a fush fla foot flash out of Tom Harvey, but Huang Lee on the up line looked off again. So aggressive. Chen is in so many different places at once. I'd love to see his thesis on superposition. Roxburgh back now. Huang Lee available in a reset instead. Continues to use Nguyen on the far sideline. Paveda can't put the shot up because there's nothing developing for him. Finds Nguyen on a line drive. Huang Lee loses yards but keeps possession forced out. Not a lot of movement there. Brings it back across to find Greo. And a pick has been called. The momentum killer. Chen checks the disc in. Cleo immediately resets to Huang Li, marked by Millard Cartwright. Left hand shot to Nguyen. Aggressive upline by Paveda shakes free of Fluk. Puts it through, but Yang is in the way. One hand by Eppleston, despite the bid. An open Yang, far sideline, looks back, finds Tom Harvey midfield, comes around to Chen. Eppleston again with the shimmy shake to break past the defense. There's the other inside shot, Yang Chen pushing deep. It's Millard Cartwright for the score and the game. Fishwick unit, 15. Stout seven. The lads in orange have only gone and done it. We'll see them again very soon in our grand final match for the Open Division of the 2024 Australian Ultimate Championships here in Shepparton in Victoria. My name is Blair Munro as part of the Ulti TV crew working with the Australian Flying Disc Association to bring you the very best coverage uh, in Ultimate here in Australia, in New Zealand and around the world. We have a very exciting match for you coming up next, a women's division semi-final, followed by our Opens grand final and then our, open, our women's division final match. What a day it is ahead of us, folks. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back very, very soon. TV.